In this video here, I'm going to record a demonstration on how we go about using the Expert by Stronix programming software when uh, we don't have the hemming tooling. So in this part here I've shown, I've got some hems going on. You can see my mouse jumping around a bit, but I've got a hem here and a hem down here. And currently we're doing those in a different press break and then we're taking it over to the Expert break to finish up. So what I've done is I brought my part in, I go to the design stage, and what I'll do then is the two bends that have the hems, just because I want to keep track of those bends, and I, and I want all the flanges to come out right, I don't want to have to try to figure out the, the offset difference, all I do is I just go in and click on the change bend line button, and I'm going to click on this bend line, and I'm going to right click, and it brings this up. And what I did is this bend type was set to hemming. And I went ahead and changed that from hemming to normal bending. And that changes the type of bend it is. Then I gave it a bend angle. And that can be anything you want it to be, really. It's, uh, since it thinks it's a hem, I put it at 35 degrees. But uh, you know I'm going to go ahead and change that to 90. So that way it's just a nice 90, and you can gauge off it for anything else. Then we're going to go to... Uh, the tooling looks good, so we're good there. I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to do the same to the other bend. So I'll go Edit Bend, go to this flange, right click, and I've already changed it from hemming to normal bending. I'll just change that to minus 90 instead of minus 35. Okay, then I'm good to go. Now I'll go to the bend technology. I'm going to OK that it, it bends overlap. And now I've got my bend sequence. I've already worked on this ahead of time. So I've got my bend sequence in there. So you see what I did is I put the two bends with the hems. Those are bends one and two. So then when I go out to the machine, we'll go over that in a bit, but I'm going to delete those steps or I'm just going to override those steps so they won't be used in the machine itself. So I can finish through my bend sequence. I've got all my fingers that are already ready to go. I've covered that in earlier episodes. Now I get to my tooling. And what I want here is I want it to be run with a, with a space in here. So what I did, it, it tried to do it in, in a few different uh, actually stations. So I would have to do two different setups with multiple stations. So I went ahead and deleted all that out and changed it over. So I'm going to do the first bend and then when we get to the bend here, it actually has a bend line here, and there's a bend here, but the bend line's missing. So for some reason, I'm not sure why, but it wouldn't treat it as a single bend. I don't know if it's the way it came in from the model, but I tried deleting and adding a bend. It didn't work there either. But uh, So what I just ended up doing was I deleted the bend, and I know it's gonna bend it out on the machine, so I'm okay with that. And I've got my tooling set up so it'll do both those flanges at the same time. And the way I did that was just edit. And you can go in here and you can see I've added a blank. So I've got my 515 millimeter, my 200 millimeter, and then I've got my 714 millimeter blank. And I did that by right clicking, adding in a blank segment. And then from there, I just punch in the distance I want it in millimeters. Or, or inches, whichever way you're working. And uh, it goes from there, and I've got my setup. And then I added another 40 millimeter, 515 millimeter, and the same for the bottom. So that gives me my tooling along the bottom here, a space, and then the rest of my tooling. And then what I did is I just to go then and change each station. I can change the part at the actual station by using the drop down. I've got it all to station one, because like I said, the default. Uh, when I did the auto technology, it went ahead and tried to do several setups and several stations. So now I've got it all down to station one, and I just move it along the path by giving it a dimension offset on where I want it to be. And I could do that over here on the part on the station. So if I go back to bend three, you know, it's 25 inches, so that's going to put it right in the middle between the two punches and the dies. Then you this one here, it's, it's uh, going to fit on the left station. Then we're still on the left station. 
can see there, now we've gone over to the uh, right station. And uh, we're actually, uh, I'm sorry, back there, we're on the uh, left station still. The left station, there it is over there. You can see, so we're still on the left. And we went ahead through there. Now another thing I want to show you, when we get down to the last tab here for the calculations, after I've done my automatic calculation, let it run its thing, I've got all my press settings here. So what I did is I went through on a couple of these steps. Like this one here, it just has a little tab. And what I can do is I can change over my clamping point if I wanted to add a little more pressure before the back gauge moves out of the way. I've got my top dead center on where it's going to open up when it's finished with the bend. I've got my bend up speed, which I generally don't mess with. Um, I guess if you had a really big, heavy part, you might want to slow this down so the part doesn't fall back into your hands. Uh, the bend down speed, I cut that in uh, just about half. I cut it from 23.6 down to 10 inches a second. And uh, that way there, it has such a little tab, it won't try to yank it out of your hand and uh, will slow it down, get a little better bend hopefully out of it. And then on another setup, what I did as well, so on this one here, when I get it out, so at the end of this bend, I went ahead and increased my top dead center to three inches. That way when it finishes this bend and they go to the next step, the ram will already be opened up a little bit so they can see in there a little bit better. So uh, that's it for this tip today. And uh, so now hopefully you've learned a little more on some of the more advanced uh, programming techniques.